Chris, I have your 6105 in here. Um, as I like to do, let's talk about the numbers. Um, I've already previously looked at the numbers and they were not good at all. Uh, in fact, my machine was having real trouble reading the watch at all because it's running so poorly. Um, it's unrestored, it's original. Um, you know, it's. It's definitely got its issues. That's not what I wanted to have happen. Yeah, I'm starting to get numbers here. It's just running really poor. Like it's very, very weak. Uh, it's running like I would expect an unrestored original, unserviced watch to run, especially one that has had water in it repeatedly. And that's kind of what we're seeing. Uh, my machine can't really get a reading on it. But I can see from the display that it's kind of a mess. It's just, it's rough. It needs cleaning, it needs love. By the way, something I'm going to be interested to see. See that right there, that little mark? Seiko put that on some 6105 cases and some very early 6309 cases. Not all of them, and only every now and then. It usually seemed to relate to, um, some people theorize that it relates to the placement of the click ball assembly, but somebody's not sure. This kind of a mark I normally see, it's like testing the metal hardness, but it's just theories. And so I'd be very curious to pull that bezel off and see if there's any connection. So that's, that's actually kind of an unusual thing to see. Hang on. Okay. I am glad, by the way, that you decided not to um, open this up and try to deal with uh, try to deal with any of the loom issues. Uh, these are blooms from water, of course, but it's extremely easy to damage the um, it's extremely easy to damage the markers. These kind of blooms. With care, they can be minimized. They can make it look a little better. This is a watch that I did that had the same kind of thing. Not quite as extensive as yours, but it had four markers with these stains on there. And the hands had to be redone completely. So these are the original hands that I reloomed. And this is the original dial with the original loom. I just cleaned up these markers and removed those black blooms that were on there. And so you can see it looks a little nicer. And that's what I would suggest doing here. I would re loom those dials, re -loom the hands. I, I wouldn't necessarily advocate re looming the entire watch, but your damage is a little more severe, so it's up to you what you want to do. I mean, all the loom is damaged, even your loom pip is damaged. But, you know, re looming a watch will. At this point, you start to balance whether the re looming, which, which would be more detrimental to the to the watch, leaving original damage loom in or brand new loom all the way around. It's up to you. That's obviously not yours. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is a new process that we're doing. One of the reasons that this happens a lot is because these crowns, these Seiko crowns, um, are sealed. The seals that are in them are in there permanently. And so it used to be that if you wanted to change the seals, I marked this so I knew that I rebuilt this. If you wanted to change the seal, you had to change the whole crown. As of last week, that has changed. We can now take apart the crown. We can get this metal part out. We can get the old junky seal out. There's the old washer back. And we can put in a new seal. We can put a new seal in this crown, reseal it like I just did this one, and externally it looks exactly the same, but internally that's a new seal. No one else is doing this commercially in the United States. Only one friend and business partner in the UK is doing this. So it's us or him in the UK. But that's an unbelievable breakthrough. Up to this point, for many years, you just had to live with having a bad crown seal. Now you don't.
and that's a huge breakthrough and I strongly strongly recommend that you have us do this because it will protect this watch for the years to come. I strongly recommend it. Okay, that's it. Thank you.